Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Depending on where you are in this world, God bless you. This is Gloria White coming to you from Utah, USA. Today I'm uh, sporting a hairdo from um, a new shampoo and I put no conditioner on so I have no willing curls and I look like I just put my broom up. <laughs> anyway, now we're going to be in the New Testament in the King James Version of the Holy Bible. We are in 1 Tim Timothy, excuse me. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of our God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. As I besought thee to abide thee at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. Now the end of the commandment is charity, out of a pure heart and of a good conscience, and of faith unfeigned, from which some having served, have turned aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say, nor whereof they affirm. They know nothing, they're false prophets. Our world is full of them. And not just here now in these end times. They've been here with us always. But do you know how to spot them? Do you know when you hear them speak? Is that scriptural? Do you know your scripture well enough to say, no, no, that's not right. What you're saying isn't right. No, no, I'm not following you. No, the doctrine is... Jesus Christ came to earth as a man, born of a virgin, Emmanuel God with us. And he was crucified on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. He was dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, defeating death. Today he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And under him has God put, the, uh, God the Father put everything. He's over everything, and there's no name higher than Jesus Christ. Jesus the Christ. And unless you accept him as your Lord and Savior by repenting, telling him you love him to please ask him to come into your life, you cannot get to the Father. Where is the Father? In heaven. Why did Adam and Eve get kicked out of the garden? because they disobeyed God. And they separated us from God by their actions, by their sin. Now, we have been given an opportunity to go through this world and show God if we stand with him or if we stand against him. There will be many that stand against him, but it is God's will that none do that. He wants all to come to repentance. All will not come to repentance and they will have their part in the lake of fire and brimstone with Satan and his holy fallen angels. His unholy fallen angels. So let's continue here in um, 1 Timothy. Knowing what the doctrine is. That is the doctrine. There should be teached taught no other doctrine if it you if you're around anyone who's teaching a doctrine other than that get away from them run as fast as you can away from them do not have any further contact or association with them they are of their father the devil who was a liar and a murderer from the beginning and how is it that you could be you know, that you could die and be murdered by Satan if he can draw you away from God and your salvation. 
And how will he do that? With lies and deception, causing you to doubt the power of the blood, causing you to doubt that you have been forgiven, that your sin has been removed from you as far as the east is from the west. There's no doubt in my mind that if he is able, he will discourage you from following Christ. He will put it in your head that you are too bad, you are too awful to be forgiven. And that, my friend, is a lie. And our Lord, what he died on that cross, the way he died on that cross, and what he died on that cross for, do not take it lightly. He didn't. He did that to bring us back to the Father, to reconcile us back to the Father, so we can be with God the Father for eternity, and Jesus, and the holy angels, not the unholy, not the wicked, not the evil, not the wicked doers, not the sexually immoral. We're going to read here as we go along in Timothy the things that will keep you out of heaven. So just pay attention, listen, and to know that if you're doing these things, you need to repent. Some people say, oh, but you know, once I, once I asked him to forgive my sins, that's like forever. I don't have to worry about asking him for forgiveness of my sins. It's forgiveness forever. Well, if that was the case, then when we turn to Revelation chapter 2, verse 5, and I'm turning there so I can read it word for word. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. So now, this is to the church. The church is Ephesus. These are already saved. These people are saved. They're in the church. They're part of the church. They are the body of Christ. But yet and still, he has a problem. He says, Thou hast borne and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hath not fainted, nevertheless. I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. What's the first love? That Jesus was born, died on the cross, was buried. Third day he rose from the dead, sits at the, father, the right hand of God the Father Almighty, to judge the quick and the dead. All power is given unto his hand. He, he's in control. And then he says, Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works. That's the first works, the gospel. Or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. So now let's not have any more of this foolish talk about, oh, we don't have to repent for our sins. I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, you better be repenting. You better be getting those sins off you. Does it cost you anything to say, Heavenly Father, I'm sorry I sinned. Please forgive me. Does it cost you anything? If you don't do it, it could cost you. So, I wouldn't take that chance. Hell is hot. It will always be hot. It'll always be an unquenchable fire. And there will be, in hell... Weeping and gnashing of teeth forever and ever. So, I wouldn't take that chance. I'd repent. Just like getting saved. I wouldn't take that chance of not being saved. But when he comes back, you want to be going with him. You don't want to be left behind. All right. So, let's continue. So, uh, okay. But I didn't get very far in this chapter, but I, important messages. There's important messages. Verse 5. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. 
What is that? What is he talking about? He's talking about the commandments. Love the Father with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. It's love. Charity is love. So let's read it again. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart. Love them willingly, openly, not begrudgingly and like, oh, I hate doing this. Because he will see in your heart that your heart wasn't in it. You were just going through motions. That's not going to work. He doesn't look at you as a person. Oh, you're tall, you're short, you're fat, you're skinny, you're rich, you're poor, you live in a ghetto, you live in a mansion. He doesn't care about that. It's not important. That is not where he's going to be looking when he's deciding this one to heaven, this one to hell. So don't let that deceive you. Live in love. Live lovingly. Love one another. That's what he's saying here. Out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. Verse 6. From which some, having swerved, swerved, have turned aside unto vain jangling, idle talk, just foolishness. They turned away to suit their earthly lust instead of continuing with the Holy Spirit into a more spiritual realm. We're getting our spirits into heaven. This flesh, it's going to stay here until it's resurrected. But it's not going to be resurrected to life if you have not followed God's teachings. If you're not being loving, if you're not um, practicing love, being love, you know, then you're not going to be in heaven. There's other things here that you shouldn't be doing. Let's continue. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. They don't know what they're saying. They're just saying whatever comes to their mind. If you don't know the scripture, you can be led astray. Just like when Jesus was up there and the, let's see, it was Matthew 4, chapter 4, when Satan, Jesus had fasted for 40 days and he went and he was led by the spirit into the desert to be tempted of the devil. And the devil twisted the words of Psalm 91, verse 12. If you don't believe me, go read verse chapter 4, verse 4, and then go read Psalm 91, verse 12. And see what words were put in there that didn't belong in there, where he twisted the scripture. This is why we need to know the scripture. Otherwise, we can be pulled away with lies doubts and deception and what will happen we could lose our uh, our mortal our um lose our spiritual soul to live forever we could lose it can you lose it once you've got it yeah you can lose it once you've got it depends on what you're doing have you been get, uh, seeking repentance daily? You're carrying around sin if you're not. Okay, let's see. All uh, right, so verse 8. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers. This is Paul speaking this after what he did, crucifying Christians. Now he has come to awareness and Christ spoke to him and he taught him 
and gave him complete understanding of the, of the doctrine, his purpose, what that means to the people, and what he should be telling the people that he comes across, what, what he talks, what he speaks to be the truth and in love. Now, verse 10, for whoremongers, and that would be fornicators, for them that defile themselves, sodomites with mankind, for them that defile themselves with mankind, sodomites, for men stealers or kidnappers, for liars, for perjured persons, for perjurers, the ones that say testify to a lie. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust, he was trusted to preach the true doctrine. And so he says, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust, and I thank Jesus Christ, our Lord, who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, and I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. He didn't believe Jesus Christ was the Lord and Savior. He didn't believe it. He was ignorant to it. Even though he was a Pharisee, highly trained in the law of Moses, and should have known the scriptures said and spoke about Jesus coming, but he didn't recognize him. He didn't recognize him as the Savior. Because they were expecting them to come, him to come and, you know, Put Israel on a thr on the throne. Put put Israel up above everyone else and, and save Israel. That's what they were expecting. And so when Jesus didn't do that when he came, they were like, uh, no, I don't think that's the guy. And then they killed him. But had they not killed him, how could we have gained uh, salvation? How could we have had our sins washed away with the blood of Christ? It would have been impossible. So now um, Paul is continuing. I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Now verse 15 is a unfulfilled prophecy. It says, this is the faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He, do you remember him saying, I didn't come for those who are well, but I came for those who need a physician, that need healing. So it continues that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Paul's like, I'm the worst one. I, 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 it's me. I'm the worst one. But he forgave me. And he washed away my sins. How be it for this cause I obtained mercy. That in me, first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. For a pattern to them which should hereafter. After me speaking, believe on him to life everlasting. Let me get through to them, Lord. And, and let me teach them what I didn't know. What I walked around in ignorance. Killing them. Hunting them down like animals. God forgive me. He did because of his ignorance. He didn't know he was sinning. He didn't know he was breaking the law. He thought he was doing God a service. And there will be many who will think they are doing God a service in killing Christians. Verse 16, Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy, 
that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory for ever and ever. Amen. This charge or this command I commit unto thee, son Timothy. He's speaking to Timothy now. He's, he's trying to set it in his mind of how he should progress, of what he should be doing in this world, what his job is. So he says, This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. And what is that war? Is it with battle with swords and knives and guns and shields and staves and javelins? No, no. <laughs> it's a spiritual battle. We are in a spiritual battle for our soul, for our spirit to preserve it unto eternity. Yes, we are in a battle. And if you go to Ephesus chapter 6, Ephesians, excuse me, um, chapter 6, and read that, you will find that there, that we fight not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. Go read that. Find out why we need to don our Christian armor, the armor of God. It's called, we call it Christian armor, but it's the armor of God. It's he has put the power in those pieces of battleware. <laughs> Our armor is of him, by him, for us. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou what by them mightest war a good warfare holding faith and a good conscience, which have, oh, excuse me, which some having put away or rejected. How many people have told you, I'm not interested. No, I don't want to hear that. No, I, no, I don't know anything about that. I don't, no, I don't want to know. No, 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 that's not for me. How many? But listen, you plant that seed and you just keep moving. There's lots of more, lots more seeds to be planted. The harvest is full and it's ready, but the laborers are few. There's few of us that are going out and, and telling people about the doctrine, about the gospel, about salvation, about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. There's so few of us, but it's okay. God will direct. And you never know when he's going to go, um, you. And he's going to give you a job to do. Don't reject him. Don't put it away. And don't not do it. Because if he calls you to do something, he's going to make a way for you to do it. Trust him. Absent here, present with the Lord. Don't reject him. You don't want to be left here when he comes to take the church, which is you and me and those that have been saved. You can call them elites. You can call them elect. You can call them chosen. They are God's people. And I hope you become one of God's people. And if you're not, please get in the scriptures and read for yourself. But before you start, Ask for understanding and knowledge. Otherwise, you're just reading words on a page. They have no meaning to you. But the Holy Spirit, He will give you meaning of those words. It'll be remarkable. You won't believe how the story just starts coming to life off the page of this book. This is a love letter. This Bible is a love letter that our Father wrote to us. To tell us how to live 
and tell us how much he loves us, to show us over and over and over his power. Nothing is impossible for him. With him, all things are possible. Don't ever think that in your, you're in this world alone. You're not. He is there. He is waiting. He is wanting. He is longing for you to reach out to him. He's ready. He's waiting. He, He's just, oh, come on. Oh, come on. Trying to get you to pay attention. And there's different ways that he does that. But we're not going to get into that now. Verse 19. Oh, no. Verse 18. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away or rejected concerning faith have made shipwreck. They, they suffer a loss of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may not learn to blaspheme. He delivered them unto Satan for a punishment. That when they recognize what's happened, they'll they'll be repenting and coming back. I guarantee you they'll be coming back real quick. So now, brothers and sisters. <sighs> The time is getting shorter and shorter. See, the last generation. It began on May 14th, 1948, when Israel became a nation in one day. It was a document that they, the leaders of the, in the world signed that made Israel a nation in one day. In one day. That was following World War II, where there were millions and millions of Jews killed in Auschwitz. Auschwitz. I can never pronounce it correctly. I'm not being disrespectful. But there's so many that were put to death. Satan was having a heyday, a party. And the people in the world that were against the evil they fought and they gave their lives many many gave their lives for them for for the freedom that man each man deserves just like when the time here in America when we had the civil war a hundred six hundred thousand men died to free the slaves. Were they all black? No, they were not. Were they all brown? No, they were not. Were they white? Oh, yeah, the majority of them were white. But we hear this twisting of the truth, and we see the twisting of the words trying to make like, oh, well, you know, these people deserve restitution. Let me stop you right there. Those people received restitution from the United States government. At the end of the war, they were given 40 acres of land and a mule. Did anyone else coming over to America on a ship receive 40 acres and a mule? No. Because it was the restitution to the people that were in slavery. And not just the blacks were in slavery. Not just the browns were in slavery. White Irish were in slavery. You didn't know that, huh? A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, my ancestors, my Irish ancestors, slaves. Am I going, oh, give me some uh, restitution. Pay me, pay me. I want free money. I want free money. No, 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 no. I'm a Christian also. What about all of those that were killed in the Colosseum, eaten up by lions, that were hung? How about the ones that were 
rolled in tar and put on a pole to be lit at night and burn as light down the main road to Rome by Nero. How about them? Do they deserve some restitution? You know where we'll get that justice? <laughs> yes. He will come and put everything right. Yeah. No, you don't have to take anything into your hands to correct what's been done. Men that made those decisions, people that made those decisions, they will pay. Unless they repented and received salvation, they'll be paying in hell for eternity. It's not our job to punish them. It's not our job to judge them. But I'll tell you, me, as an Irish person, and as a Choctaw Indian, I will not go after my government for money because my ancestors were hobbled and put into tunnels to make way for the railroad. Don't you understand? There have been wrongs in this world all the time. Through this entire time on earth, there have been all sorts of wrongs. But what did God say? And this is very important. If you don't forgive, I won't forgive you. That's what he said. And do you think he meant it? You know, he doesn't lie. He cannot lie. So when he said that, he meant it. If you do not forgive, you will not be forgiven. And as always, I love you.